Hello, I'm Melissa Lang and I'm an abstract painter. I work in oils, acrylics, and charcoals. And as you can see, I'm, my paintings um, are very expressive. Uh, my subject matter is, my, the concept actually behind my paintings are sort of the intersection between human behavior and thought and emotion and um, sort of between the intellect and feeling and between the mind and the body. I'm, my work has a lot of movement and gesture in it as I used to be a dancer. So when listening to music, it, it sort of channels through into my arm and creates this sort of um, lyrical line that is directs movements and conveys my experience, my feelings and at the moment. And then I'll come back to my work, maybe take a break, maybe the next day and start analyzing and thinking. So there's this dichotomy between sort of the human condition of our, you know, our brains and our, and our hearts that sort of have a dialogue. And whenever, you know, I, I'm interested in how the mind and the senses constitute reality, but through nature. I love nature and have always, since I was a young girl, and I live on, my studio is on the Palouse, and I, I it oversees the acres of beautiful woods and a theater of dynamic skies and clouds, and it's, so I'm constantly inspired not only by just visually, but also experience, experientially walking through nature where I find small little items um, where maybe some, some bones from, from different deer or animals, um, rocks, twigs, um, any small item like that in reference I'll, I'll choose. At the same time, I'll be, you know, in awe of just the phenomena of the experience and of weather. And um, then when I read about what's happening, you know, um, grand scale with volcanic eruptions and man-made and natural disasters and um, through all that, waves, gigantic tidal waves, um, there's, that has a certain energy. And I think that, that my, my work kind of conveys that sort of energy as a metaphor, and um, and then and then at the same time we are connected to that, and so it relates back to just our human, my human experience, and so these are kind of the bigger ideas that inform my work, um, and but when it really comes down to it, I I just start, I generally start by drawing, and and then I paint into them, but sometimes I also start with painting, and so. My color choices are very intuitive based on what I'm looking at or experiencing um, at the moment. It generally, what happens though, with all that thought and all that concept, I start painting and the painting really tells me what to do. And I know that I'm connected with the process when the painting starts telling, you know, react, when I start reacting to an action, when a rapport or a dialogue develops, it's like, um, I'll make a mark. Where's, let's see here. And I'll, I'll come down and let's, let's add a mark over here. A lot of times I, I don't have references. Sometimes I'll bring a reference in in the middle of the process because I get lost. And sometimes I start with a reference. So it's all depending on um, how, what the painting needs. So as I see this mark here, that's, that starts telling me that maybe I want to add something over here. I'm going to add possibly, I'm going to maybe darken that area. I'm like, well, that's not going to work. So <laughs> I'm going to soften that. And so it's kind of like, try this. No. And then there's a lot of, you know, second guessing, like, no, maybe not that. And then as you start, as soon as you start changing and 
um, interacting with it, new new things develop, new discoveries, and um, maybe I'll bring this. So as soon as I can think myself out of the painting, but as soon as I start getting into the process, it it starts telling me what to do, and then I know I'm hooked and I'm connected. So it really it's really a uh, translation of my immediate experience, sort of an improvisation. So I graduated from the University of New Orleans in 1994. So in my graduate program, I explored drawing and sculpture, sculpture as a minor in addition to painting. And, but it was really the drawing that, where I found myself and I found my voice. Um, and I think it's because I'm, I'm working with charcoal and it's very malleable and mutable. I can, I can change it. Oh, here, I need some. It's, it's very forgiving, you know, and, and it, it also is very interactive. So I can come, if I feel like I need to add a line, I can, or take out um, images, I can erase it emphatically. And then I can, it's, it's because it's just a direct connection between the charcoal and my arm, and I don't have the, technical mediation that painting involves with mediums and brushes. And so that almost creates sort of a, and connects to my brain. So it sort of sometimes stops my um, emotional expression that, that I love what happens with drawing. So um, also anytime you, when you're painting with oil on canvas, there's a tradition of much um, um, sort of an elitist, history that creates a, can create a lot of expectations that creates sort of fear and hesitation. So when I'm working on paper, it's almost like I'm working on the wall and it's almost like a child drawing on the wall. So I'm really into, I love working on paper and lately I've been working on mylar, which is another more ephemeral um, surface that has light and air and movement and it's also very um, forgiving and accepts the mark, but you can easily take it away. So I'm, I'm really interested when I'm drawing in not only creating my direct expression, but also when I'm referencing an image, how, how the line changes. And I think throughout my work, this is evident where I'm exploring the different characteristics of line. And so if I draw my own line, um, no, I don't want to do it right here, but it, it can, have a certain dumbness or a certain self-conscious feeling to it and whereas if I'm referencing an image which I talked about nature but I'm also interested in sort of the microbiology and what's happening underneath the appearance of things and in terms of atoms like the difference between what the surface of a leaf looks like and what its molecular um, structure is doing so I have a lot, I refer to science a lot in my, in my research. And in this piece, I was just intrigued with this little giant chromosome of a midge. And so the image is just sort of relates to a lot of other patterns in nature. But what happens is if I'm just referencing this, I get a different kind of line. It's more of a, a distanced line, sort of a aloof line. And so I'm, I'm kind of interested in the relationship between those two and how do I bring them together or do I? So there's always these questions when you're an artist like um, what if and don't be afraid. Um, fear can really get in the way and it has with me in the past. So as a way of breaking from the, the canon of art history and the traditional methods and practices of making a very important painting on canvas for you know, important causes and such, I, which can create a lot of fear and hesitation. I've been exploring different um, acts of, of, of exploring just the, not only the rectangular frame, which we expect to see a painting on, but also, what, it, what does a painting mean? Um, I was thinking about also traditionally how we, how space is created through the illusion um, and pushing the space back into 
you know, perspectival, three-dimensional space. And with my paintings, they're very much asserting the surface and the material properties of the paint themselves. So they're actually more honest because I'm not creating, telling you a lie, saying that this is deeper than it is. Or, and so now I'm even pushing it further by creating these veils, which actually a painting is a veil. Each layer is a veil. And we experience our world through veils, through um, screens of, of our phones and our computers and photography. So um, now I'm creating, pulling, creating these uh, painting off another type of mylar that I can impose over the painting and start breaking up that rectangular um, presentation as well as extending the event of the painting's action on, onto the wall and into the space and into the viewer's experience. More than the viewer just interpreting it visually, he, he, she and he will feel it um, physically. And so I'm also intrigued with, like, what does this line mean that's on the surface in relation to the, the line underneath it? And those start forming a dialogue. So the work is always process oriented and sort of referencing itself. Another way I think I've been doing is cutting up my old drawings and discovering new shapes and um, and then by cutting up even the shape of a line I think has been sort of surprising for me and in a way it and by reconfiguring the different shapes I'm not only discovering new shapes but I'm also it, intrigued with the negative space that happens and so a lot of times my drawings are one big overall field and so they're kind of like a figure and in contrast to the general figure ground um, relationship that most paintings have with figures and in standing in front of their background. So then my grounds actually be, start becoming figures with these collages. So I actually kind of like them just on the wall. And I'm not sure if I, if I started recreating that onto another piece of paper, it would become figure ground again. So I, I kind of like being able to play with it and, and surprising myself with you know, what, what other um, images, a lot of times in the process too, I'll see images that I didn't expect to see. And then the painting almost will become about that more than what I started with. So, um, so anyway, I'm, I'm kind of intrigued with, with finding something worthwhile to do with the drawings that maybe weren't always successful. <laughs> so, yeah. So as I, I keep painting, I, I get to the, process sometimes where I'm never quite I'm not quite sure if it's done and I have to let it sit and sometimes I'm never done and I've had I've even displayed and exhibited pieces I had a show at the Junt where this piece in that Gonzaga's museum and this piece was on display there but it always felt like it was just hanging on a thread and so I've been going back into it and what's dangerous about that is because I'm I'm a different person than I was when I first painted that. So it's, it's kind of, um, it can be tricky. So, so as I don't lose the original impulse of it. But of course, I'm referencing a very small, tiny photograph. And it's really the act of trying to get a good painting out of it, not to show you an image of, of, of nature, but more the, the facts, uh, the facets and, um, uh, experience of nature. So uh, with this one, I'm I'm still working on this, with, but still wanting it to keep its initial freshness. There are some others that I still haven't quite finished, and they've been hanging around. And this one, I I'm, I'm intrigued with just because I'm I'm not leaving as much white. A lot of times I just start with a white canvas, and I'm almost painting in the style of watercolor, where you paint from white to dark and in this piece, I, I wanted to go back to the tra traditional method of where you just create an overall field of color and then paint into that. So I'm still working on that, although I love the lyrical balance and play of this. I, I really want to add another element. But as soon as I do that, it changes. So then I have to commit to really, it, I might lose the painting in the process. Another one of this was just, this was one of my favorite paintings. It's, 
because it just came out so, when I talked about contrived line versus natural line and versus authentic, original, expressive, um, direct line, this one has no fear in these marks. And it was actually um, after a season of doing a lot of weeding, I was trying to get rid of all the thistle out on our property. And so, it's, it's like these flying seeds, and it's also triggered by jazz music, and um, so you just, you can feel it's an event. It's not really a, a scene, it's more of an experience, so, and an action. So this is, that's one of my, one that I love. And I have other works that you can be seen at the Art at Work program at the MAC, and um, I'm actually going to have a show there in April in the Helen South Gallery, yeah. And so I'm really excited about that. It is a beautiful space. And so anyway, that's what I'm currently working on. I want to have some bright, fresh, exciting new paintings for that. And so you'll be enjoying your Christmas pudding and I'll be in the studio painting. So thank you so much for coming to see me in my studio. And I wish you... Very, very happy holidays.